Hey crafters, it's Lorraine from craftersl.com and today's project is an ombre effect inked panel uh, to make a card similar to this one. Uh, so this is your ombre effect ink panel and the stamp set I'm using is the Dandelion Wishes. Uh, so I'm going to make it a little bit different from that one but the principle is the same. Uh, so this one is going to have a a card base uh, which is four and an eighth inch by eleven and a half. Uh, it's going to have a black matte layer which is four inches by five and five eighths and then two whisper white layers which are both three and seven eighths uh, by five and a half inches. Uh, one's for the top, one's for the inner. So we'll just use the top one for now. So Firstly, you need to take a ruler and a pencil and measure in however wide you want your uh, panel to be. So I just go for about one and a half inches in from that edge. And then the other edge, I don't bother marking because I just need the post-it note to cover it so that I don't accidentally get ink down this side. And you're going to get a post-it note and just tear so on the back of the post note the sticky is about half an inch wide so if you can just tear a thin strip off all the way down uh, there's no right and wrong about it it's just a, to make a, an edge that's not as uniform as the edge of the post it note and then stick that on roughly where your pencil marks are And then erase your pencil marks. And the magic of television, here's one I made earlier that I'm going to use for the other side. So I'm just going to make sure that that covers the edge of my cardstock. And that's not a very big gap, so I'm going to redo this one and have it an inch from the edge. Okay. The marks are just so that your panel is like roughly vertical, but because it's got the rough edges on it, it won't be immediately obvious if it's not anyway. So if you want to just eyeball it, that would be fine. So I'm using quite a lot of inks today to get this effect, but you can do it with just one ink and just graduate the shade, make it darker at the top and make it lighter at the bottom. Um, but I'm going for like a sunset type look on this card today. So the trick is start with your lightest colour. So I've got crushed curry here. I'm using a sponge dauber and just dunk it in the ink lightly. Start on the, uh, the post-it note in a little circular motion and then move on to the card stock and just keep applying the ink. And then start from the other side because you always tend to put a bit more on. It'll look a bit scratchy and not very effective to start with, but don't worry about it. So, next colour I'm using is pumpkin pie. Oh, I'll wait if I can get it open. And do the same thing, but start just at the edge of the yellow that you just put on. So don't do the bands too wide because we're going to try and get six colours on here. Uh, next up is Cajun Craze. Oh, I've just got that all over my thumb. Again, always start on the post-it note first and then go on to the card because otherwise you're just dump too much ink down in one place and then it'll be really hard to blend it out. So as you can see at the moment we've, we've got quite definite lines but when we've gone up the way uh, and finished that we're going to come back down and that's when it'll all blend together. So next is Cherry Cobbler. Like I say you, could, you don't have to use all of these you could just use three colours if you wanted to. Um, 
and just it would just be bigger panels and take a bit more blending together if they were very different colours. I quite like this, it reminds me of a sunset. Uh, next up is Rich Razzleberry. A lovely purpley colour. And last is Blackberry Bliss, which is one of my favourites. I love this one. So we're going to try and get it quite dark at the top. Plenty of colour on there. And then just bring it down a little bit on your sponge without re-inking it to go into the rich raspberry. So we're done with the blackberry brush now. We go back onto the rich raspberry. Bring that in from the side. Start over where your blackberry bliss has been. Go right up to the top if you feel like it. And then start coming down a little bit into the cherry cobbler colour below so you can see the lines that were there are starting to disappear then we're on cherry cobbler you can go start in the purple one you've just done and then bring it down a bit further We're into Cajun Craze, starting the, the cherry cobbler layer, blend them all together. Doesn't really matter how much you go over them, to just keep going till you get the look that you want. Then we're on pumpkin pie again. See, that's what happens if you don't start on the. Uh, the post-it note enough. I've got chucked a load of ink on there. I don't want to keep keep at it to blend it out a bit. In the end, you're going for an overall look. It doesn't. You're going to have a, an image over the top of this, so it won't be quite so obvious anyway. And then blend the crushed curry into the pumpkin pie layer, and then your your white bits in between. Have magically disappeared. So you're done with all your coloured ink pads now. So next you carefully remove your post-it note. Oh, I put too much ink on there, it's just gone through onto the bottom. I'm sure you won't notice by the time we've finished. So there's the basis for your ombre effect. So I'm now going to stamp the image over the top. So I'm using the triple dandelion from Dandelion Wishes. I'll just get rid of this ink pad before I get that everywhere. And I'm using the Stamper Artist as well because I want to uh, heat emboss as well. So I'm going to stamp the image and then I'm going to put some clear embossing powder over the top. So I know you can uh, stamp, you could put uh, black embossing powder on, but I prefer to stamp with black ink and then just put clear embossing powder over the top. That's just the way I roll. So I'm going to put my card in there, just secure it with a magnet. Because it, these are uh, foam mounted stamps, you have to take, there's a a black pad that normally goes in if you're using photopolymer stamps. You need to take that out um, if you're using the Red River ones. Although I have got a little tiny bit of craft foam underneath, just I find it gives me a better image. And then I'm going to ink up with Memento and So give a little press, hold it in place for a minute, let the ink transfer 
and it's pretty good. So I'm just going to give that a second to dry because memento ink takes a little while to dry. So I'm going to do a little hello card with this one. So I have this stamp set called the Make a Difference, which is a flouncy alphabet um, and then also just block capitals and load of little, little sentiments. And if you're going to sell your cards, there's a copyright stamping up one as well that you apparently need to put on. So I'm just going to do hello because the last one I did was happy birthday and it took ages as you can imagine. So this time I'm going to do just hello, little hello card and I've mounted the four letters uh, H, E, L and O on there. just need a post-it note or a bit of scrap paper because I don't want so the H at the top of the block and the E's down here I don't want the H printing again So it's not there again for the so protect the O. Oh. So there are my letters. And now I want to put a bit of Versamark ink on them. So ideally, that's why you're using the stamp position, is so we can put the Versamark on this stamp and it will stamp directly onto there. However, because I've got these letters uh, individually. Uh, you just have to sort of eyeball it because we're using clear embossing powder it doesn't really matter and don't worry about the state of my uh, Versamark pad it's a dazzle one and I just use it for multicolour things and I've got a normal Versamark that I use if I need it not to have multicoloured bits on it so because the stamps are clear you can more or less see although I'm not, I can't see over the top because the camera's there where they need to go, but the clear embossing powder is quite forgiving. It just gives a nicer as I raised effect. Makes your letters shiny, hides of if you've not stamped them quite clearly. Oh that one's rubbish, nowhere near. Oh well, let's plough. Oh, do you know what I didn't do? As usual, I forgot to use my embossing body, which means that the powder doesn't stick. So where you've got oil on your fingertips and static around, the embossing powder will stick to all of those marks that have been on the paper. So. so you should be able to see if it's stamped okay because you get a bit of a sheen to it. So it seems to be there now. I'll move this out of the way. I'm going to get my embossing powder. And just sprinkle it on it off, sprinkle it on again, tip it off, give it a tap, uh, I tend to give it a little flick on the back as well and it seems to be well covered. So there's going to be a bit of noise now because the heat tool is going to go on. 
So I'm just warming it up a little bit first before I apply it to the card. I've got a board that I use because I saw online that it can help stop your card warping, which it still warps a little bit, but it seems to be quite as bad. I need to get a clip to hold it in place because you can't get your fingers anywhere near this heat gun. It's not a hairdryer, it's a heat gun. And then you apply this and just follow it up as you can you'll see it starts to melt. It's like little magic happening. Sure, that's not what Jamie Oliver had in mind for his uh, bread board, but there we go. So, as you can see, it has warped the paper a little bit, um, but that won't be too bad. That's why we've got layers to stick it down onto. So, you can just see that where I didn't stamp the O properly, but it's still just giving a really nice uh, raised effect. And to be honest, nobody will really notice unless you point it out to them. So we're going to stick this onto the black uh, matte layer and because it has warped as you can see there when I'm trying to press it down the best thing to use is some wet glue because it will stick it down and then so just put a little line all the way around. And centralize it on your black panel. So once you've got it in place and flattish, turn it over and give it a good rub to bring it back. And then there's still a little tiny bit warped, so by the time it goes onto the card front, then that will level it out. So the card front I used. Uh, so the card base is crushed curry, so to coordinate with the the colour that we used in the bottom layer of the ombre section. And the card inner that I didn't stamp. So to do that now we're using the other stamp uh, out of the Dandelion Wishes set which is the one with the where this the seed clock is going. So where I stamped the envelope earlier on I can see now where I need to put that for where it'll stamp. So I'll just stick that down, ink up my I've just got a piece of um, just copy of paper in the bottom of here so that the ink doesn't mark the actual stamp artist. So memento ink takes a little while to dry completely. Quite easy to smudge it with your thumb. So, so I'm going to put that down on my mat and because it doesn't really need a great deal of holding I'm just gonna run a bit of snail adhesive on that one centralize that in there so you've got a nice light colored bit to write on 
and there's your card. Uh, when I've made these before, I have put some of the um, the rhinestones in the centre because they handily match the small, medium, and large size rhinestones. But if you want to be able to send this in the post on a normal stamp, uh, then you can do it now because it's a completely flat card. And there's the envelope I made earlier to go with it. So it's nice for people to know, get a coordinated envelope, they know it's going to be nice post for them. So I hope you've enjoyed today's post and I'll see you again soon. Bye.